Good afternoon, everybody. May whatever I say here today be of immense benefit to all of us. And may whatever I may say here, utter or spill, be of uh, bring uh, distance all of us from suffering. Um, after that being said, I think I can say almost anything. Um, so, um, public speaking, I fear a lot usually, and one of the worst fear during a public talk is how to ignore the listener's yawning or dozing off. <laughs> but I will try my best. Um, and uh, so the topic being happiness, I try to put uh, some funny images, as I, as I might call, um, into the slides. And uh, I hope you will find them funny. Um, I was known among my friends as great at making jokes that are not funny. Um, so first of all, I would like to um, uh, say thank you very much to Kishila, uh, to the director, and Bryce and everyone who is uh, um, uh, concerned with organizing uh, this wonderful conference, this inter uh, interaction between the uh, Buddhist uh, monks and scientists, uh, philosophers, and uh, thinkers. And uh, I think I, I will, uh, you know, go down to my uh, core subject, happiness. So as you can see on the slide, um, as happiness is when we are finally aware of the leaves rustling and see the beauty of or in it. Well, there's just an anal some sort of analogy. What it actually I'm trying to sort of illustrate here is happiness is when as I think Professor Mukhopadhyay said uh, that from day one, that when everything is in harmony, when your mental state as well as physical state is in quite in harmony, you will be able to you will be able to uh, be aware of the surroundings and uh, see the beauties of the details uh, in our surroundings, and uh, so happiness is. Um, even though there are many, many, many levels, especially from a Buddhist point of view, there are many subtle levels of happiness. Um, this is one of the, the one I'm trying to say, I'm, um, I'm trying to illustrate here is the, uh, one of the, um, uh, the, the, the thing that is illustratable. There are many uh, other levels of happiness which is unillustratable, and uh, so, um, so basically, uh, happiness is when, as I said on the day one, uh, harmony brings happiness, and when all the whole of uh, the wholeness of your um, body and mind, the mental state as well as the physical state, and everything is in um, is in harmony, then be, uh, happiness comes. So this is you know, uh, my brief um, sort of introduction on happiness. And uh, so in Buddhism, we always talk about cause and effect. And the cause for happiness is not something ready-made or it's not out there by itself. It's not automatic. Happiness comes from your own actions. Happiness comes from your own actions when you are when you are true to yourself, to others, and uh, when you are, yeah, when you are true to others as well as yourself, and uh, when you are sincere, and uh, when your uh, mental state, speech, you can, yeah, your mind, your speech, as well as your uh, actions, are sincere and true. Um, then um, happiness can be generated or happiness will follow through. 
and uh, some thoughts on happiness from ancient tradition. That is uh, Master Shanti Deva, who, who has been quite popular the last few days. Um, um, so he says that even, even though we all wanted to get rid of suffering, we would rush towards suffering, and uh, though we want to, we want happiness. Uh, due to ignorance, we try to vanquish our happiness as if it's our worst enemy. Um, what he is trying to say, what he is saying here, is, um, of course, uh, I think, yeah, uh, what he is trying to say here is, we are, we, we, we are, uh, due to our ignorance, we do not recognize the cause of suffering, or we can say, happen, sorry, sorry, cause of happiness and uh, cause of happiness and uh, and you can also say we do not know what happiness actually is because we do not know the nature of happiness or happiness itself we also um, uh, we also confuse uh, with the cause of happiness and uh, ignorance actually plays a very big role in all the problems uh, from a Buddhist, a Buddhist point of view, that's how we explain, but it is not just because you are a Buddhist or not. Uh, ignorance, I think, uh, brings suffering um, in, in reality, uh, for real. And uh, so, yes, to get rid of suffering, as Master Shantideva was pointing out here, you need to know what is uh, happy, happiness, which is the uh, opposite of uh, hap uh, su suffering. Uh, the suffering is happy, uh, opposite of the happiness. So you need to know, uh, the, you can say that to know, to, re uh, to recognize what happiness is, you actually need to know what, what is behind or what is, back, what is at the back of that thing called happiness, suffering. In, in other words, you need to recognize happiness correctly, accurately, you need to know what suffering is. And uh, unless you know, you have any idea of what suffering is or what caused suffering, uh, it will be difficult, almost impossible to bring, uh, bring happiness, you can say. You know, there are many levels of happiness. So for any level of happiness, there is a uh, Mm, um, sort of a uh, adversarial uh, suffering there. So when you know that adversarial kind of suffering counterpart, you can say uh, on the back, like like a back of a coin. So when you know that suffering, when you know that suffering, and when you are able to get rid of that suffering, uh, the happiness sort of automatically uh, jumps in, like a balance, uh, like a scale. Uh, uh, happiness and uh, unhappiness or suffering are like uh, two balance on a scale. So when you, yeah, I think I made myself clear. And, yep, and uh, so yeah, that, that's basically what I was saying, uh, talking, saying about happiness. Uh, and uh, for those who do not know, uh, the, the, the person holding the tablet is the creator of, uh, you can say creator, of iPad. And uh, yeah, and uh, what he, well, there, there, I, I read somewhere that there are 600,000 apps in iPad. And I don't know how many of them are necessary, uh, really necessary for, uh, in our life. Um, so what, yeah, what this is trying to say is uh, to gain happiness, we try, yes, to gain happiness, we, we go after a lot of things that we thought or we think that will bring happiness, but in actuality, it does not. Like money, for example. Um, we work so hard for money, which is actually uh, sort of, uh, we work so hard for money in order to become happy, but we become unhappy by not getting enough money. 
enough wealth. So um, this is what Shanti Deva is talking about by you know uh, hurriedly rushing towards suffering. Um, hurriedly rushing towards suffering. I think that's a good point because of the you know the red race we have in this world. Uh, currently, we are having in this world. So, um, so we are rushing towards things that will cause unhappiness, believing that this will bring us happiness. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, this is this is an, this is supposed to be an example. Um, okay, so I sort of sort of a way towards happiness, but you know, it's very basic. But uh, yeah, um, on a societal level, as well as a personal level, I have made two graphs. So on a societal level, I think uh, when you have a problem, the, the opposite of happiness, when you have, a suffer when you have su certain suffering, when you have a certain problem, which brings suffering, so when you have that suffering, when you have that unhappiness, when you have that problem, the way to us solving it at a societal level it would be, from my point of view, firstly, gathering the right information of source on the sources of all the unhappiness or problems, as we say in our daily life, um, getting the right information uh, from uh, it is in in our Buddhist pr uh, Buddhist practice we call it. Uh, recognizing the cause of suffering, and uh, I think that is uh, that is one key 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 point. And then after, when, when you when you know the when you are able to pinpoint or source out the uh, cause of all the unhappiness or problems that you are facing at a societal level, then I think you need to discuss the best and the most amicable way to solve it. Um, it is nothing new. I think most of us are doing it almost every uh, all the time. Actually, we have been doing that for the last few days. <laughs> and yes, and uh, yeah. So the reason I'm pin, uh, sort of uh, pointing it out here, panning it, panning it out here, panning out the, uh, these three lines, is it would differ a little bit from uh, happiness, the way towards happiness, on a personal level. So the third one is when you have when you know the when you have sourced out the cause of the ha unhappiness or problems or uh, suffering, then you uh, and after much discussion and finding the an amicable for finding a suitable way to solve it, what you have to do is you have to solve it. What we lack in our society is there are. We, we, we would say, that, we used to say there are, there are you know, uh, not many intellectuals or whatever, but I think there are so many intellectuals, but we are, there are less practitioners, I, I would say. Um, what has been sort of panned out by the intellectuals, the paths or the, the, the ways, the methods panned out by the intellectuals were not really acted upon by the practitioners. Uh, by, 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 the gen, by, by the general society. Like we are not, we are more, um, we are more of a um, uh, intellectual, we are more of a complainer, we are more of a, um, yeah, but we are less practitioner. Not in a sense of Buddhist, uh, uh, spiritual practitioner, but in many, many, many uh, problems in our society, we ha we we know about we know about the uh, of how to solve these problems. Uh, for example, like uh, the uh, the global warming, yeah, like that. For example, we know actually almost all of us know somewhat little bit about how to solve it. Uh, but what happens is from a from a very personal level, not just to an industrial industrial scale, but from uh, on a very personal level, those things we do know, we do not practice. Like switching off the lights when we go, when we go out of our room. Yep. 
And then I think that is how we so unsuccessfully try to reach for happiness. And uh, there are two ways of looking at this picture, uh, sort of uh, de uh, describing this picture. One is happiness is out there, and uh, one is happiness is out there, and uh, you know, gathering all sort of uh, material ma materials or external factors to increase or increase your happiness or get happiness, become happy. And the other thing is, uh, yeah, that is the, going to the, for the external thing. And then the other thing is uh, searching for happiness externally or internally, but going for the wrong causes, as we talk about, uh, as, as cause and effect is very important in, 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 our, uh, in our tradition, in our philosophy. Uh, without cause, there's no effect. Without seed, there is no <coughs> apple without apple seed. So, uh, so cause of happiness, what we try to, um, we, we try to look for happiness uh, externally, that's one thing. And we also try to look for um, happiness <coughs> internally, but where it, is, where it isn't there. Um, uh, one, good example, one good example might be grudge. Uh, when we have, when, yeah, when, when, we have uh, when we have animosity towards somebody, some, some, uh, someone else, we hold gr grudge so that we may take revenge someday or whatever. And we feel like by taking, by avenging that whatever harm was done to you or your uh, close, uh, near, near, close, uh, close by, close, um, will help you. Or it seems like it brings some sort of uh, satisfaction, contentment when you are able to avenge them. But what follows is disasters. So that is, yeah, like grudge is inside, it's not outside. Grudge is inside. But with grudge, um, like, uh, like holding a grudge and uh, sort of, um, you know, um, confusing or believing it to be, it, it to bring some sort of happiness, which uh, bring contentment and satisfaction. Uh, you may call it loyalty. You may call it, there are a lot of things like that. Honor, you may call it loyalty. Because of loyalty, you want to avenge somebody. You, because of con uh, honor, you want to avenge someone, somebody. But it does not bring you happiness. So this one is very, um, this is uh, uh, by one Bengali filmmaker named Rishikesh Mugherjee. Um, I, I guess maybe he paracorded, uh, he sort of uh, paracorded, right? Paracorded it from uh, from Rabindranath Tagore, which was the author of Indian um, uh, uh, anthem, anthem, the national anthem. So whatever this was in his uh, his his movie, which is a, a very famous movie called Bawarchi, meaning the cook. So he says it's so simple to be happy, as you can read here. So what he's trying to say here, I think, I found this um, in line with what Mahatma Gandhi also said, you know, simple living, high thinking. And also in Buddhist terms, uh, we have, for, 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 a, for a monk, uh, the, we have this thing called tunyua, um, chawanyua. It's meaning, uh, mean, means uh, less, how do you say, less work, less fuss, something like that. So what, what it's trying to, say, trying to say here is, you know, uh, this is kind of a minimalistic approach towards life. Or you can, can you say reductionist? I don't know. Um, uh, the, the whole idea is being happy or being content with what you have not going after uh, things that you may not be able to achieve or you do not have. So I think I need to rush. Oh yeah, I think this was uh, illustrated, uh, this was uh, spoken out by 
um, Fre Fresco, Fresco yesterday, to David. And uh, so you can read it yourself. So uh, one key thing I want to point out from this thing is uh, it says um, focus on what's important. So regarding uh, lots of things in life, like uh, materials, um, and especially information, since this is what we are talking about the whole, day, uh, the, the whole three days, um, the information that you try to catch in, that you try to uh, sort of uh, seep in, should be something that, is, that should be helpful towards you, or that it should be something that is, um, um, that it should be something that is helpful towards you, or it should be something that will, that is condu conducive to your happiness. And uh, perhaps that's just a Buddhist point of view, or maybe everyone, every, everybody wants to be happy. So, so on a on a personal level, so I'm not gonna uh, talk on the first two. It's uh, so on the third le uh, the, the the third point. As I don't have much time, I'm gonna uh, skip to the third point. Um, on the societal level, I said you should not accept is uh, you should sort of tr uh, when you have a problem, you should uh, discuss it and then you know tr uh, work on it. And uh, on a personal level, on an individual level, uh, I think when you have when you have some sort of unhappiness, when, when something when some uh, uh, misfortune bef befalls you, I think you have to accept it first. Um, you call it call it fate or whatever, for, or, or if, if if there is a, you know like a lot of um, there is a degradation in the road system or your municipality or whatever, then you can call it lack of collaboration or this or that. But accept it, accepting whatever problem that comes to you. Exception, accepting a problem is the is the first thing. Many a times, what happens is. Problems always comes into our life. What happens is we try to ignore it, we don't accept it, we try to brush it aside, put it on the carpet, and what happens is the problem aggravates. So, this summary. Um, though in no way can we ignore or deny the necessity of external tools to generate happiness, True happiness comes from contentment, love, respect, appreciation, and acceptance. And uh, yeah, thank you. Tatan darun bujig sunya la ni karsa dewa di ni susugi ni ngoshe wache wale tende chik sunsa sunje na kamay na ti degi gidi di shi bine gato dewa di susugi ngoshe wache wale shi bine gato ti deshi tende jaro jita wadi gala. He asked, how do you recognize happiness, as I just said. So basically what I'm saying here is, uh, when I said um, recognizing happiness, I'm, uh, by quoting Shantideva, what I'm trying to say is you need to uh, know the causes of happiness. And uh, yes, and happiness itself as well. Um, when something makes you happy, but does but it does not. It sort of uh, makes the other person uneasy or unhappy. I don't think you can call that true happiness. But it can be because of his or her jealousy. That's another matter. But from a sane perspective, if somebody else is become uh, has uh, has been Im uh, has a negative impact effect or impact from my happiness, so and so called so and so happiness. I think you cannot, uh, it, it should not be defined as happiness. Thank you very much. If we love to be happy, why are we running away from it? And if it is not something to be gained from external circumstances, objects, etc., why is it not available with us all the time? There is a true happen, true sort of a prefix there. I think well, by true happiness, I mean we, what we used to say like 
everlasting happiness. Maybe there's no such thing as everlasting, but uh, since everything uh, is impermanent, uh, is impermanent and changes, but um, happiness, when we talk about happiness in a truer sense, uh, I think it is derived not from external factors. Take, for an example, a rishi, uh, um, a meditator, a sage, living up high up in the Himalayan mountains, uh, not just here, but in the, let's say, the, in, in, the, in, in the snowy mountains, with, without anything, you know, just a uh, loin cloth and some, maybe something to eat, maybe not. And uh, I think he has happiness. And then there can be lots of billionaires or millionaires uh, filled with gold and this and that or whatever, still not getting happiness. So. Uh, in a truer sense, as well as the source of happiness, I do not think is external factors. I would say too, just to um, piggyback, um, I have had patients with major depression who have told me that they, there's something enjoyable about being sad, that there's something that um, scares them about changing and being happy um, and it's a little shocking because you know they continue to come to therapy and they continue to work with me to find happiness yet they're terrified of changing or of being happy and when I asked one of my clients why or patients why this is she told me that falling from happiness is more painful than staying sad uh, I think again, um, there is, a, as I said, uh, there, there are levels of happiness. And uh, yeah, I would like to narrate a story. Uh, like two or three years ago, back, uh, my youngest brother, it was on the New Year's Eve, on the New Year's Day. So he said, I'm going to wish you a new year, but I'm not going to say Happy New Year. Because you don't, I, don't, I don't know whether you want happiness or something else. So I think it makes sense because um, I don't know from a West, uh, say, from the uh, Asian or Oriental point of view, but in the West, I think we would celebrate tragicness. Like, for example, Shakespeare is renowned for his tragic um, stories or things like that. I mean, we enjoy, we go to, let's first say, let's say we go to see horror movies, we go to see sad movies, and we read movies that, uh, novels that have very sad endings. We enjoy them. And uh, you can say enjoy, but not happiness, really. So, yeah. So, uh, when you talk about the true happiness, so actually, I wonder, you know, what do you mean by that? Did you mean something, you know, uh, when, you are, when you are completely free from all the suffering? Or if that was the case, then it is possible to gain that kind of true suffering as a sentient being? Yeah, true, yeah, true happiness, I'm sorry. Okay, so first I will, since this is a very tricky question, what is true happiness? Um, I will go by negating what is not. So true happiness is not listening to music, good or bad sound, or having tasty food, or you know living in a warm house when it's cold outside, or air conditioned room when it's hot outside. I think it's none of these. And uh, so true happiness, you can say it's uh, irrespective of what is happening outside. Whether it's cold, hot, tasty food, non-tasty food, delicious, non-delicious, good smell, bad smell, whatever. You are aware of all this. You have to be aware. It's not like you are dull or you know, numb, feeling numb. Your senses are numb to all this thing, you know. You have to be aware of all the surroundings, be aware of it, be able to enjoy it, or be able to appreciate, uh, you know, re recognize it as it is. 
suffering or whatever, and then, you know, being uh, unmoved by it. That, suffer that, that is happiness, true happiness. <laughs> So I actually have a follow-up question on that. Um, do, you have, do you have any suggestions for how we as scientists could potentially measure happiness? I mean, what does it look like? Do happy people display some kind of behavior? We, because actually in the things we've talked about so far, the only way we've discussed for measuring happiness is just asking people basically, are you happy? But could you think of any other ways? I may, I may sort of answer with a counter question. I think Matthew Ricard was known as the happiest person in the world. How was that measured? As well as how do Bhutan measure their gross national happiness level? You know, that is, since this is a scientific sort of thing, um, I don't have an answer from a Buddhist point of view for that. But how, how is that done? Like for Bhutan, they have GHP instead of GDP. So how is that done, and how did you measure Matthew Ricardla? To answer, attempt to answer that question, I'm not sure about uh, Bhutan because I'm not an expert on that. I, I do know how Matthew Ricard is was measured, and I don't think all scientists agree that that's a good definition of happiness. But you know, they compared some amplitude of brain waves in the left and right part of his brain. Um, personally, I would think that I have a bias for observing behavior and maybe, you know, we could come up with tasks in which we look at how people react to certain stimuli maybe of food or other things and could we say something about happiness or where they look, how they move their eyes. Anyway, just some can, thoughts. Can I respond to that for maybe a minute? I feel in life perhaps sometimes it's better that we keep a few things which cannot be measured. That will definitely lead us to happiness. And, I, and the other response is, sometimes, you know, very important fundamental states of being like happiness cannot be measured with the use of numbers, but it can be measured by qualities. So these many qualities you have, then you can know how much happy you are. So that's one way of looking at it. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I've been trying to work out uh, my personal definition of happiness, and I think I've come up with, for now, uh, happiness is not being eaten by a lion. <laughs> so, no, and I mean this, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's a term in, in Western science called adaptation, and this is, uh, and, and we talk about this in two ways. We, you know, we see, we see species uh, adapt to their environments and they change biologically, and, you know, this is really, uh, notable uh, with uh, the species that are uh, endemic to the Galapagos, and they've changed because of living in the Galapagos. But we talk about behavioral adaptation, where we uh, see all the cues for reward. We find the, the, the beautiful papaya tree, and, and we find the best ripe fruit on the tree, and we know, we know what it looks like, and we know how to pick it. And we know where not to uh, come across a pride of lions, so they eat us. So I, I think happiness is, is, is accurately seeing the environment uh, without any delusion and uh, having a, a broad and flexible repertoire of behaviors that allow us uh, both to nourish ourselves and to protect ourselves when true dangers are present. Mm -hmm. Being happy and happiness is quite different. So. Being happy, I think this is what you just described. You know, this is my point of view. So what you just described, I would uh, sort of, you know, set it, set it aside as being happy. And happiness is something else. Happiness, I think, is like I described earlier, from my point of view, like negating all this thing and uh, being uh, irrespective of good things or bad things, whatever happens to you, being aware of everything, being able to appreciate and also criticize, uh, I don't know, like criticize if there is something like, oh, it smells bad. You know, you have to be, you, you, you are not numb, right? And being able to be that, uh, you're not in a vegetative state, uh, you, you are able to, you are aware of everything, but still unmoved by it. I think I would say that is happiness. So one quick response. I mean, I, I wonder if there's an assumption 
in, in the definition of happiness that we're working with right now, that happiness is the absence of any effort, the absence of any sweat, the absence of any uh, discomfort at all. I think, I still think that, that, that you know, especially we've been talking a lot about the interdependence of things. We must be organisms in the, in the world, in the environment, and there are these uh, um, both rewards and pitfalls in the environment that are inherent. Mm -hmm. And I think happiness is, is not stepping in the hole uh, mm -hmm. and, and having enough of a reach for, for yep. the things that, 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 uh, that make our lives better. That I do agree. I will bring another di <coughs> dimension in this happiness. Happiness uh, belongs to self. And when the self is comfortable with its value system, the self is happy. What disturbs this value system of self is information and phenomena, external information and external phenomena, which disturbs my value system. When self is comfortable with its value system, that gives you um, happiness. And it has been seen also, those who are obsessed with this happiness, happiness, they are the most miserable people. You have to go, whether I am happy or unhappy, I have to do my duties, I have to do my things, and when you do your things, you feel more happy. But if you are always obsessed with this happiness, happiness in your psychology, you will be the most miserable person. You know, consciousness is insensitive to everything else. Just like brain is itself is not sensitive to pain, cut, mark, or any injury. Brain itself is insensitive. Similarly, consciousness is also insensitive. But it feels happy when somebody surrenders to it. When somebody surrenders to consciousness, consciousness is very happy. Yes, blessed you are. So happiness has different levels. And on the value system, on the value system, it depends. I would say too on the idea of value systems that um, we do have some evidence for this that there's um, people are happier when they're um, when there's less of a discrepancy between their actions and their ideals or their values and the way that they behave on a regular basis and so um, uh, minimizing that discrepancy is one of the major goals of a lot of the psychotherapies that we do. Um, the other um, evidence that we have is that people who um, say that they value happiness, it's one of their core values, are less happy. I may have sort of um, maybe a statement, I don't know what it will come, in, come down to. So um, talking about value system, like sort of evaluating happiness uh, through our value system, there are different value systems, isn't it? Like um, in some traditions it is considered good or right to be cautious, uh, you know, respectful and all, all this thing. Uh, respectful not very much, but cautious, cautious and being formal and things like that, like in Japan. And uh, in some societies, it is considered better or, uh, I mean, right not to be that formal because being, be, by being formal, you are concealing your true emotions. So when somebody shows cautiousness, can you say cautious? Courtesy towards you. you to, so to some people, you, uh, they might be happy. To some people, showing courtesy and all these things will make them not so happy, feel like, oh, they are concealing something or that. So how do you sort of, you know, differentiate or whatever, like uh, compare these two things? I mean, because there are different value systems. So how would you evaluate happiness through a different value system?